Welcome. We are here, Art for All People. It's a beautiful Saturday. It's 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 15. 15. <laughs> and we have a guest artist today. She's teaching karmic weaving. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Maria, and I'm an artist and a yoga teacher, and starting to get more into somatic coaching, so how to embody uh, feelings and emotions and be more of a, living more of an embodied life. Um, and I studied art as an undergraduate in college, and I've been teaching for four or five years now and practicing yoga, and it's been a constant conversation that's mm. happened from my art making process that seemed very separate at the time and then my yoga practice that also seemed separate but they've been just conversing for longer than I thought. Let's talk about that like how did you first weave together yoga and art and did you it was like a aha moment for you or? Uh, I think it was a slow aha moment uh -huh. in a way. Um, I thought more of my yoga practice in the beginning as a physical thing, and I knew that there was something that was happening, but um, I was just continuing to study and to teach at the time while I was studying um, art making and kind of diving into different fields of art making, different mediums. And the more that I learned about the yoga philosophy and kind of what was happening during my practice and my teaching, it just started to influence the conceptual side of my art making. Mm -hmm. And so then, so I would be making a, a piece and all of a sudden I was finding, um, you know, when you're making something, you don't really know what's happening, what you're making. And then you reflect on it and you're like, oh, okay, this is what, this is what I'm making. And it seemed to be always coming back to the philosophy that I was learning mm -hmm. um, from teaching yoga and practicing. and And then, once I kind of recognized that, then I would go to my yoga mat as a way to to work out more of what was happening in the art making. Mm, cool. So then they just started to work back and forth. It was a little bit of a, I, I guess there were some aha, some tiny aha moments. And um, really this year I started realizing that, you know, I started doing this karmic weaving technique, but then I had this moment of realization. I was like, I've been doing this for so long. Yeah. I've just given it a name now, and I am learning as like what's really happening. Um, I'm articulating it better, so that maybe is more of the aha's is being able like to you, articulate. Like you, you found happening. the words. Like you were doing it all this time, but then you found the words too. Let's talk about karmic weaving today. You're doing this amazing workshop. What yeah. what is it about? I'm interested. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to talk about karma, uh, the philosophy of karma, um, kind of our. Our understanding of it in the Western world and then more of the philosophy of karma in the yogic sense and then how karma kind of manifests itself in our lives through repetition and pattern and samskaras and major habits that we develop yeah. and then that's going to kind of be woven in with uh, the idea of making something repetitiously um, and and how we kind of choose the patterns that we create. Mm. What are we, what patterns are we weaving into our life in a way? So that whole idea kind of stemmed from this beading process that I was doing. I learned how to bead with very tiny acrylic mm. beads. Uh -huh. And as soon as I learned that, it was on a very small scale, it's very tedious. As soon as I learned that, I was like, I wanna make my own beads. I wanna make mm. ceramic beads. and weave them into a tapestry. And I just felt this like strong urge, like I need to make ceramic beads and weave with them. And oh. I didn't really know why, and I'm still kind of figuring it out, but I think it was because I felt that need to be making the pattern that I was then weaving. Mm. And um, that's kind of what karmic weaving is about for me, is being able to recognize that we have the power to create the patterns that we mm. practice. Or change just them. To, yeah, to change them. And to understand them yeah. rather than to just say, this is who I am. These are the patterns that I have learned and there's no changing them. But yeah. to understand that we can understand them more and then change them and create new ones. So so it's like a form of empowerment, basically. Yeah, yeah, in a way. Amazing. So in one word, what does yoga and art mean to you? Or a couple words. Mm. Curious comes to mind. I think of... Um, art making and then my yoga practice as uh, 
platforms to express my curiosity um, and to continue to ask questions and maybe find some answers, but asking the questions are mm. really interesting to me. Um, that's where I find the biggest excitement is not when I get an answer to a question, mm -hmm. but when I find out a question that just is like, oh, I wonder what the answer to that might be. I don't know, but that question is really great. So you're suggesting you bring it to your mat and to your canvas or to your weaving and ceramics? Yeah, it's more of, um, you know, when I, when I work with different materials, it's more of a, let's see what this material will do. Mm. Let me just respond to it and allow it to respond to me. And uh, in that place, then we find what we like, you know, whether it's paint or responding with clay or weaving, we just figure out what happens in that space. Mm. And the same thing when you go to your mat, you, maybe you know exactly what you're going to do. A lot of times you just kind of let the asanas unfold and <clears throat> same thing with meditation, something comes out. But um, usually when you, for me, when I approach it with more of a sense of curiosity and, and um, just openness to the possibilities, then that's when it reflects a more, a more powerful experience. Mm. So what would you like your um, students to take away from this workshop, this karmic weaving? Um, well, I feel a lot of my teaching is, is um, or my practice personally, and then, then what I try to teach is to help people ground themselves, to be okay, and hopefully more than okay in their body. Um, specifically with karmic weaving, to kind of embody that sense of empowerment or embody the um, just the knowing that they can create whatever they want. Mm. They can create the patterns of goodness. They can create the patterns of suffering. Um, but they have that power themselves. They can create it. So I think that's what... Amazing. Amazing. Any final words? Final thoughts about live art yoga? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one's too broad. <laughs> That's too broad. Okay, like what, you know, do you want to create a movement with this art and yoga? What do you, it's obviously, yeah. it's a form of service, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm starting to put together a project um, called the um, Yoga for Creatives Project. Mm. Helping, well, not just helping creative people, who we all are creators, um, but helping people see the act of creating um, as something that, needs to evolve that um, you know it's a natural process is to evolve but um, individually you can instill practices in your art making or in your art cooking you know whatever a form of creation that you practice uh, knowing that there is an evolution that happens and then how do you want it to evolve so this project that I've that's kind of in the works right now is helping people use the practices of yoga and mindfulness and meditation to ground themselves in, okay, wh what is the direction that I want my creative process to mm -hmm. go in? And what techniques can I kind of acquire and use at different times to help that move in that direction? Mm, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for your work. And thanks for being at Our For All People. Yeah, yeah. thank you.